Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to County Executive's virtual, uh, Pittman's virtual press conference. This morning, the County Exec will share a variety of updates. Uh, as usual, we'll take questions after the County Executive's comments. Uh, as a reminder, please put your name and media affiliation in the chat, and I'll call on folks in that order. Uh, and another reminder, please keep your camera and microphone off uh, unless you are asking a question. With that, Mr. County Executive. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, great weekend, great weather. Um, I want to thank everybody who came out all across Anne Arundel County for all the festivities. Um, huge, huge crowds. Uh, I was at Annapolis, Cape St. Clair, Galesville, and then Severna Park. And um, the, uh, the sense of enthusiasm, I think, for um, just being out among people was, was uh, palpable. And uh, had a great time. So thanks everybody who showed up. Um, today is the first day um, officially back in offices for county staff um, in accordance with our new telework policy. So if you go to aacounty.org slash telework, you can look at that policy. Um, much, uh, um, uh, many more people will be doing telework. Uh, we've learned a lot from, from COVID about, you know, who can be productive uh, from home, some folks will be some days in and some days out of the office, um, but it um, feels good to be back for those who are coming back, I think. Um, on the 19th is when public county buildings will be, all county buildings will be open to the public. Um, tonight, <clears throat> our first county council meeting back in the council chambers. I know the council's feeling uh, great about that, and it'll be great to have some of the public out there as well. Um, but on COVID, I do, I do want to, um, just remind people that, uh, you know, we hear a lot about the Delta variant and, and the speed with which it spreads and we're watching what's going on in the Southern hemisphere. You know, there's no question about this being a seasonal virus. And um, so we are continuing to keep the pedal to the metal on getting everybody vaccinated um, as soon as possible so that by fall, we do not have a significant fall surge um, that surge is likely to be unvaccinated people, and we want everybody to be vaccinated by fall. Um, Body-worn cameras on our police officers today. 143 officers will have their cameras rolling, and uh, um, I think we talked about this last week. The um, All of them will be out there with cameras by September. Uh, the training is ongoing in, in small groups and the numbers will be increasing every week. So um, we feel great about that. As I look back on, on uh, when I first came into office and started saying that we needed body-worn cameras, that it would be a positive thing, um, there was a lot of resistance and that resistance has completely disappeared. And I think there's pretty unanimous support for this. And I'm glad to see that Anne Arundel County is, is um, one of the leaders in the state on that. Um, others will be joining us by 2025, I believe it is. Um, uh, ARPA funding the American Rescue Plan Act, um, 112 million that we will be getting um, in, we got half of already and, and the other half next year. Um, we're gonna be putting out a survey next week and that survey will be available next week, um, asking our residents what they think the priority should be in the use of, of that funding. Um, we've been clear so far that uh, economic opportunity and recovery from the pandemic economically for all is one priority and another is um, anything and everything having to do with improving the health and wellness of our residents. So um, within those parameters, we're, we're um, going to be asking a lot of questions about what people think um, our focus should be in the use of that money. Um, and then finally, Thursday night this week will be the first week. We scheduled the first and it was rained out, so we're, we're rescheduling that. But um, of our budget tours. Um, now that we've passed our budget, we're going out into all seven districts of the count, county and um, letting people know some of the, the things that are in the budget that they can look forward to and, and get working on getting engaged in. Um, this one will be with Councilwoman Pickard in District 2 at um, Fire Station Fire Company number 26, which is South Glen Burnie. And um, um, we'll have with us Chief Wolford and uh, um, some some residents um, talking also about um, other public safety funding, rec and parks, education, and other other topics. So, look forward to getting those rolling, and I uh, hope to see some of you out there. And I guess now we're we're over to Dr. Kalyana Raman um, with more on uh, COVID response. Thank you, County Executive. Um, 
Let's start with our data. Our hospitalizations continue to be low, less than five. Case rate is one. We've seen that it's pretty much leveled off there. And um, in the in the state, we're seeing an increasing number of the cases, an increasing proportion of the cases are from the Delta variant. Um, in terms of vaccination in the county, we've got 75% of adults 18 and over with one shot, and that's great. We need to keep pushing on that. 58% of the population has had at least one dose. That's all ages. Um, why is this important? Well, in the, in the state, over 90% of the cases are in people who are not vaccinated. And I think it's a pretty powerful sign of how powerful the vaccinations are in preventing illness and keeping people safe. Um, and then nationally, almost every death from COVID in the past few months has been in people who are not fully vaccinated. Um, and that's why the best prevention is to get your vaccine. So why do we care about the Delta variant? It spreads faster and causes more severe disease than the regular virus or even the UK variant. Um, and what we see is that when people get vaccinated, um, their chances of hospitalization go down by 94% by getting both doses of the shot. That is amazing. That is impressive. Um, it's, we've talked about it always. Vaccines are a path out of this pandemic, and that's true both as a county, but also at an individual level. Um, and so for those who are not vaccinated, we strongly encourage you to get vaccinated. And it's also important to continue masking indoors in public spaces until you get vaccinated. Um, that's particularly true for our younger, uh, younger folks in the county. Um, we've seen that 53% of 12 to 17 year olds got at least one shot. That's only 51% for 18 to 24 year olds. So I'm proud of our 12 to 17 year olds for showing their older brothers and sisters the way. Um, it's part of the reason we are continuing our partnership with AACPS with public schools. So we're gonna continue offering COVID shots daily through the months of July and August uh, in four different schools on Mondays, Central Middle, on Tuesdays, Marley Middle, on Wednesdays, Lindale Middle and on Thursdays, Annapolis Middle. We'll also be doing something new. We'll be offering um, required seventh grade vaccines for the meningococcal and the Tdap vaccine, because we know that at the start of every year, there's a group of students who just don't have their vaccines and can't come back until they get those. Well, we don't want to create any delays. We want folks to be able to easily get their shots. So those will also be available at these middle school clinics throughout the summer. With that, I will turn it back over to you, Jeff. All right, we'll take questions uh, again in the chat. Please put your name and media affiliation and I'll call on folks in that order. All right, seeing no questions. We may be wrapping up early. Last call, questions? All right, thank you everyone. Have a great week. Thanks everybody.